Hey everyone and welcome to my channel, The Reader Teacher. My name's Scott. In these coming soon videos, I'll be sharing my most anticipated children's books releases for each month. This video is episode 6 of Coming Soon and it previews the upcoming books for the month of August. You can find my previous month's Coming Soon videos here. I'll be going through them in release date order and where they have the same release date, then they'll be alphabetically by title. If you just want to hear about a specific book, then use the timestamps in the description below. I hope this video helps you to discover more children's books to add to your TBR, and I'll be doing more monthly videos like this one throughout the year. So make sure to leave me a like, hit that subscribe button, and the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Let me know in the comments below which of the books you like the look of, and all the links to the books that I mentioned in this video will also be in the description box below. There's plenty to get through. So let's take a look at the books. Let's start with Amazon River by Sangma Francis and Romolo de Hippolito out on the 1st of August, which is a stunning illustrated guide to the world's largest and most famous river and its surrounding rainforest. This book may look slightly familiar to you as it comes from one half of the co-creators of Everest, another superb factual book. Packed with incredible facts about South America's biodiversity and wildlife, people, geography and history, this showcases so many incredible things about this habitat. The sections I found most interesting when dipping into it so far include information about its indigenous people and how even though the Amazon has been a source of inspiration and study for generations of scientists and artists, much of the Amazon is still unknown. The bright, bold and eye-catchingly colourful illustrations really add to this book and make it one you can marvel at for hours. Thanks Flying Eye Books for the finished copy. Next, we have Adam 2 by Alistair Chisholm, out on the 5th of August. In this one, Adam 2 is a robot and has been locked in the basement of a lost building for over 200 years, until one day he is discovered by two children and emerges into a world that's set in the future and being ruined by a civil war between the last remaining robots and humans. Hunted by both sides, Adam discovers that he holds the key to the war and the power to end it, to destroy one side and save the other. But which side is right? From the author of the space sci-fi adventure Orion Lost, which I really recommend reading if you haven't already, this book promises to be an action-packed, brilliantly imagined thriller that will have you on the edge of your seat, and I can't wait to see what's in store, so thanks Nosy Crow for the finished copy. I'm a big fan of the comedian Rosie Jones, so when I heard she was releasing a children's book, I just knew that I had to get my hands on it. The amazing E.D. Eckhart, illustrated by Natalie Smiley, out on the 5th of August, is inspired by Rosie's own experiences of living with and navigating school life with cerebral palsy, and follows 11-year-old Edie, who too has cerebral palsy. She can't wait to start secondary school with her best friend Oscar, but when she and Oscar are put into different tutor groups on their first day, Edie is devastated. Plotting a reunion with Oscar leads Edie down a different path, as she accidentally gets cast as the lead in the school play. And while she discovers she has a passion for performance, she also begins to find new friendships, talents and dreams. Big thanks Hachette for the proof copy. I really hope that it helps more children living with cerebral palsy to feel represented and see themselves in books like this one. In Betsy Buglove Saves the Bees by Catherine Jacob and Lucy Fleming out on the 5th of August, Betsy loves bugs and she's not afraid of any creepy crawly. On her sixth birthday, she receives a special gift, a magic magnifying glass that allows her to speak to her insect friends. So when a bee asks Betsy for help when her neighbour is planning on getting rid of his garden, it's up to Betsy to show the importance of gardens and flowers for everyone, not just the bees. With its rhyming text and brilliant illustrations, I love the look of this beautiful picture book, especially because at its heart is a message that no matter how small you are, you can make a difference. Thanks Scholastic for sending me a finished copy. Also out on the 5th of August is The Elephant in the Room by Holly Goldberg Sloan, which tells the story of Sila, whose parents left Turkey because of political persecution. After her mother found out that the women where she worked made far less than the men, she was fired and immigration services told her that her paperwork was not in order and that she would need to go back to Turkey to get the proper forms so that she didn't get deported. That was almost a year ago, and the longer the separation goes on, the more Sila worries that she may never see her mother again. 
Things change, however, when Scylla ventures outside her town with her dad and they meet an elderly man who was not long ago won the state lottery. Together, they form an unlikely friendship with the help of the purchase of an elephant. And when another unlikely friendship forms in school between Scylla and a quiet boy named Matteo, who has autism, it sets off an unexpected chain of events that inspires this young girl's quest to reunite with her mother. Thanks Piccadilly Press for the gorgeous finished copy. Another one for the 5th of August is Happy Here, a brilliant new anthology produced by inclusive publisher Knights of, Book Trust and the Centre for Literacy and Primary Education, CLPE, who have teamed up to pair 10 black writers and 10 black illustrators together to put a spotlight on their talent of telling their stories and poems that cover themes of joy, home and family. The book has been published to help directly redress the imbalance highlighted in the Book Trust Represents Research and CLPE's Reflecting Realities Report, which found underrepresentation of minority ethnic characters in children's books and ensured that children can see themselves reflected in the books and authors they read. Every primary school in England will receive a copy of this exciting new collection of stories and poems for young readers, so keep a lookout for yours if your school is one of the lucky ones. Big thanks to Knights of for sending me a finished copy, which has made me very happy. How to Be a Human by Karen McCombie, also out on the 5th of August, is a story that follows Kiki and Wes, who are in year 7. Bullies, humiliation and falling out with friends make every day hurt. They're alone and they don't know how to fix it. Both could use a friend. So when a mysterious character by the name of Starboy crash lands in the grounds of their school, this could be the perfect opportunity. The only trouble is, Starboy knows nothing about humans other than what he has learnt from his Earth lessons. Watching them from afar, Kiki and Wes catch his eye, and when he plucks up the courage to meet them in person, he becomes an important part of their lives in a most unusual friendship. From the sound of the storyline, it reminds me of the writing of Frank Cottrell Boyce and Ross Welford, whose characters and certainty of their place in the world makes them hugely endearing, and I'm looking forward to reading this one. So thanks, Little Tiger, for sending me a finished copy. The next book, Maddie Yip's Guide to Life by Su Chung, out on the 5th of August, looks like it's going to be laugh-out-loud funny. Told in its diary entry journal-style chapters with plenty of comic illustrations, this one shares the story of Maddie, who is perfectly happy in life, until she realises that everyone she knows has a talent, except for her. Determined to change that and enlist in the help of her brothers, bewildered granddad and her best friend Dev, will Maddie ever find her life's calling? From what I've read so far, I can really see that there's a lot of the author in the character of Maddie, who is Chinese and lives in the Northeast, where Sue herself once lived, and who is an everyday kid doing everyday things, but getting it wrong a lot, whilst being silly, experiencing the lighter side of life, and realising that life isn't perfect. Thanks so much Anderson Press for the finished copy. I really enjoyed reading Scavengers by Darren Simpson a couple of years ago, so I'm especially delighted to see another of his coming out on the 5th of August with The Memory Thieves. Set in a world where you can visit the Elsewhere Sanctuary, an island which will wipe away hurtful memories and keep you in a tranquil state for the rest of time, Cyan has lived there for as long as he can remember and blissfully goes about his day not questioning anything. That is, until a new resident called Jean Kiel arrives who resists the sanctuary's treatment by holding on to her memories rather than banishing them and together they start to question the life they're leading and the truth about the sanctuary and themselves. Darren's world building is always so detailed and multi-layered and I really like how this book is about the importance of emotional honesty, openness releasing feelings rather than suppressing them, and mental health. Big thanks, Osborne, for the finished copy. It looks brilliant. If you're after a good mystery, then you can't go far wrong with books by Sylvia Bishop, like The Secret of the Night Train. And so The Midnight Thief, coming out on August the 5th, looks like it's going to be another superb story from her. Freya hates all the boring rules at her boarding school. The other girls are mean to her, as well as the headmistress being the very definition of horrible. So when a chance meeting with two children throws her into the wonders of the midnight world, her life becomes instantly more exciting. Not least when priceless artefacts at the Grand Exhibition are stolen, 
and when Freya's beady eye of suspicion lands on her new friends, could they really be behind the heist? Or might the true culprit be someone a little closer to home? I always recommend Sylvia's books for fans of Robin Stevens and Catherine Woodfine, and especially to younger readers who may not be ready for those just yet, as they make the perfect introduction to super sleuthing. Thanks Scholastic for the finished copy. I'm a big fan of Juliet Forrest's, especially her debut children's book Twister, as she writes so wonderfully with an air of the supernatural. And there are more supernatural elements in her new book, The Night My Dream Came Alive, out on the 5th of August. However, this time, they're a bit different as they feature dreams. We all dream when we go to sleep, right? Wrong. In this one, main character Olo wishes she could, and is jealous of all the other kids at school who have the most wonderful and fantastical ones you could possibly think of. So when she finds out that there's a special place in town called the Dream Store, which sells every fun dream imaginable with a guaranteed nightmare-free adventure every single night to those who can afford it, she's determined to put this right once and for all. But when Olo finally tries a dream drop, will she have the adventure of her life, or will it turn into a waking nightmare? Thanks Scholastic for this beautiful finished copy. Not If I Can Help It by Carolyn Mackler, out on the 5th of August, tells the story of Willa, who lives with sensory processing disorder, a neurophysiological condition where the brain and nervous system have trouble processing, interpreting and responding to things around them. Willa likes things to be a certain way, and for the most part, she's able to manage these things, but there are some things she can't deal with. Like the fact that some things are unexpected, such as the secret that her father's been keeping from her, that he's dating the mum of Willa's best friend, and Willa does not like the idea of them being together at all. The idea of combining families and having her best friend becoming her sister is not something that she wants to happen. Not if she can help it. Weaving together themes of friendship, family, neurodiversity and change, I'm really interested to read this, so thanks Scholastic for the finished copy. I'm sure that many of you watching this are like me and absolutely love Robin Stevens' Murder Most Unladylike series, with characters Daisy Wells and Hazel Wonk solving murders and crimes aplenty. So make sure to watch out for A Once Upon a Crime out on the 5th of August, a thrilling new short story collection in the series featuring six marvellous mini mysteries, including four original, brand new, and never seen before stories. Around 50 pages per story. These shorter tales provide the perfect opportunity to relive the crime-busting awesomeness of Wells and Wong one last time and make this the perfect book to add to your shelves to match the rainbow colours of the others. Just look at its sprayed edges. Big thanks Puffin for sending me this brilliantly blue finished copy. Also out on the 5th of August is The Peculiar Tale of the Tentacle Boy, a debut novel by Richard Pickard and winner of the Times Chicken House Chairman's Choice Award 2019, in which we are introduced to Marina Minow, who lives in Merlinton, a fish-obsessed seaside town. Unfortunately for her, she doesn't care for fish, but she does love telling stories. Exploring the ruined, haunted pier one day, she meets William, a boy with a head of tentacles and crab claws for hands. But what is his story, she thinks to herself. Finding out that he's cared for by a fisherman who has since disappeared, but who has always warned him to remain hidden, she is determined to help him to resolve the mystery of his fishy past. I can't wait to read this, as I have a strong feeling that this will be as good as Malamanda by Thomas Taylor, and I love the look of this finished copy, so big thanks, Chicken House. Next, out on the 5th of August, is The Rapping Princess, a completely original rhyming picture book that celebrates daring to be different, from Hannah Lee and Alan Fatima Haran, the incredible author and illustrated team behind My Hair. Princess Shiloh lives in a grand house with 14 floors with her parents, the king and queen. She's even got a swimming pool. Sounds perfect. But when she finds out that she's not able to sing like her sisters and every princess in the kingdom, she's left feeling super sad as that's what she wants more than anything. Trying everything she can to sing, she starts to find her own voice and realise that she may have other talents like rapping instead. Learning to embrace her new talent makes her stand out from the crowd. This is a perfect book to read for all the budding Beyonces in this world, so thanks Faber for the finished copy.
Stephanie Burgess's books are always packed so full of fantasy and her newest book out on the 5th of August, The Raven Ear, looks like more of the same. In this one we follow Cordelia and her triplets Rosalind and Giles who have lived safely in the castle at the centre of the forest all their lives, protected by the spells their mother has woven. Bound in by the castle's great stone walls, the only time Cordelia feels truly free is when she's able to turn into a dragonfly or a blackbird and can fly beyond them. However, one day, the world outside visits them, bringing news that whoever is the eldest is the heir to the throne. The triplet's mother, however, knows that to rule the kingdom is like being given a death sentence, as no one has been able to do it. And so when she refuses to reveal who is the eldest, Cordelia and her siblings are forced to go on the run. Will Cordelia ever find the forever freedom she's always wanted, or will this be too much and tear her family apart? Inspired by the history of the castles of Wales where Stephanie lives, I'm really looking forward to getting into this one. Big thanks Bloomsbury for the finished copy. Choose your own adventure books are very popular amongst children in the schools I've taught in and the libraries I've worked in, so it's great to see Solve Your Own Mystery, The Monster Maker by Gareth P. Jones and Louise Forshaw out on the 5th of August, where you can take part in the story yourself and influence it interactively. In Haventry, a town where the ordinary and extraordinary collide, Dr. Frankel thinks Precious Monster Maker has gone missing and there are lots of slippery suspects and it's up to you to find the culprit. You become the detective in charge of the case as when you get to the end of each chapter, what happens next is your decision. Should you follow up a lead about the cunning witches or will investigating the doctor's monstrous son Monty lead you to the thief? Make your own mind up and see. With three possible endings, hundreds of paths to choose from, no dead ends and endless possibilities, you'll solve the mystery every time. I can't wait to have a go myself, so thanks little tiger for sending me a finished copy. Jane Elson's books are always rich in empathy, compassion and understanding, and I can't wait to see what she has in store for us with Storm Horse out on the 5th of August. This book is incredibly personal to Jane, as it is one that follows Daniel, who is dyslexic, like Jane herself, and most of the time school just doesn't make sense for him. Everything moves, letters, numbers, and even the classroom sometimes. His friends around him also feel quite the same, and the circumstances they find themselves in brings them together closer as a group who feel wholly misunderstood. But when a mystery horse gallops into their lives one stormy evening, it changes everything. Inspired by stories of the great racehorse Seabiscuit, they name him Jammy Dodger and find that when they work together, embracing the gift of neurodiverse thinking, nothing seems impossible. But how on earth do you keep a horse not only safe, but also secret in the city? Thanks Hatchet for sending me a finished copy. Lastly, on the 5th of August is Torn Apart, The Partition of India 1947 by Swapna Haddo a moving account of the largest movement of people in history from different perspectives, telling both sides of the story through the voices of children at the heart of the situation. It's October 1947 and two young boys find themselves thrown together during the dramatic changes of partition. As the new India and Pakistan are born, can the friendship between these two children rise above the tensions between the two countries? I'm really interested in reading this as I want to learn more about history's untold stories like this one, especially when at a time where feelings of hope were supposed to be felt in India when the British announced they would be leaving. The act of partition, splitting the country in two, caused chaos on both sides of the divide. So thanks Scholastic for the finished copy. Out on the 12th of August is Hide and Seek by Robin Scott Elliot. It is summer 1942 and we find ourselves in Paris where Amelie Dreyfus is hiding in the dark cool of her mother's wardrobe, waiting for her mama and older brother to find her. But when the sound of heavy boots signals the arrival of German soldiers, it's a matter of life and death when Amelie emerges from the wardrobe. With her family taken, Amelie has to fend for herself in Nazi-occupied Paris, first on the streets and then dividing her time amongst the calm of the city's museums. When the curator at the museum, who is a member of the French resistance, takes Amelie under her wing, Amelie becomes a resistance fighter herself, training up and having to undertake missions like saving groups of Jewish children that are barely younger than her. Will she ever get the chance to be reunited with her family? Thanks Robin and Everything With Words for sending me a signed finished copy.
Kiss of the Deer Mad by Emma Milray and Hannah Jess, out on the 19th of August, tells the tale of twins Percy and Nell Shearwater. However, Percy is not like most ordinary 11-year-old boys. He has gills. Feeling as much at home in the sea as on land, Percy goes on a journey of discovery in hopes of saving his mother, who is close to death, and does whatever it takes to find a cure. Even if that means going through uncharted waters to the island of Duna, an island which some say doesn't even exist. But whilst his twin sister Nell is left behind, she comes together with family and friends to follow and save her brother and discovers her own hidden talents along the way. Big thanks Tiny Tree for sending me a finished copy. Also out on the 19th of August is How to Survive Without Grown Ups by Larry Hayes and Katie Aby. I bet as a child we all wish that our grown-ups would leave us one day and see if we could survive without them. But that's exactly what happens in this one for 10-year-old Eliza and her genius little brother Johnny. Billed as the chance of a lifetime, their parents announce that they're on their way to Mars, leaving them both behind at home on their own. How will they possibly survive without grown-ups around? Not telling them much, Eliza and Johnny devise a plan to find out what's going on and launch a rescue mission. But will they be able to handle a suspicious villain, an island full of traps, and a trip into space? Highly illustrated throughout by the brilliantly funny Katie Aby, this zany out-of-this-world adventure looks perfect for fans of Tom Gates and David Solomon, so thanks Simon & Schuster for the finished copy. In Lightning Falls by Amy Wilson out on the 19th of August, Valerie has been living at Lightning Falls nearly all her life. She's perfectly happy helping Meg and the rest of the family to haunt the guests who come to stay there at the crumbling ghost house. But one night she sees a strange boy, Joe, up on the viaduct. There she discovers that beneath the river is a bridge, one that will take her to the world of Orbis, which Joe claims is her real home. But this is a world that is under threat. Plunged into a dangerous adventure as the link between the two worlds begins to crumble, Valerie is forced to confront the truth about herself. Amy always writes worlds full of such vivid fantasy and spellbinding magic, and I can't wait to dive into this one. Big thanks, Macmillan, for the proof copy. I've long been a fan of Piers Torde, so I'm very excited to see The Wild Before, the prequel to his award-winning and best-selling The Last Wild trilogy, coming out on the 19th of August. This one begins when one stormy, snowy night, a pure silver calf is born, on an ordinary muddy farm by the light of the moon. This is the legendary moon calf, whose arrival has been foretold since the dawn of time. According to a dream passed down from animal to animal, if the calf dies, a great terribleness will befall the world, leading to rising seas of plague, skies raining down fire, and the end of all things. And little here vows to persuade all the animals to protect moon calf, whatever the cost. But it's not that easy. And soon, Little Hare realises the great responsibility bestowed upon him, that he is the only one who can save the world. I'm really looking forward to revisiting the world of this wonderful series, albeit that this is set some years before the first book, The Last Wild, especially since the last of the three books in the series were published, the effects of climate change and the pandemic have rapidly accelerated, bringing the themes of these stories into greater focus. To end the month of August is The Book Cat by Polly Faber and Clara Vulliamy, out on the 26th of August. I always like to include books for younger readers in this roundup, and this one with its brilliant three colour illustrations throughout, from the team behind the Mango and Bam Bang series, looks like it's going to be full of the same charm. Set in war-torn London, this classic tale is one of a real cat, Morgan, who made his home at the Faber offices alongside Geoffrey Faber and T.S. Eliot, and decided he'd never leave soon becoming the best book cat in the business. But then, the blitz begins, meaning that the 20 or so kittens he's trained up to be book cats must be secretly evacuated out of London to safety. But luckily for them, Morgan has a plan. Can he complete this mission safely and successfully? Big thanks to Faber for sending me this beautiful hardback copy. So these are the books I'm most excited about reading this month. Let me know in the comments below which children's books you're looking forward to reading, particularly from those featured in this video, or any others you've got your eye on. As always, keep reading, and I'll see you in the next video.